body. I would like to hi. Hi, it's Sarah. Happy Monday. Um, I'm super trying to. Oh, there I am. Hi. Okay, just a little bit of a lag. I'm putting up my. Um, I'm trying to have my um, iPad running at the same time so I can maybe see the chat there because I'm going to try to do something else here. Although I may be talking to you. So, um, welcome. I have um, crystal talking all over me. Let me touch her ear again. <laughs> there she goes. Oh, that's a long lag. Okay. Um, So I have uh, a new thing I did that I'll show you, and um, I'm excited about it. It was fun. I took a class in the kitchen thing, and I um, didn't do the stocking. I, I was supposed to do the stocking, and I didn't do the stocking, so may, I thought maybe I would just do the stocking with you, and that's why I wanted to have um, comments open on my iPad so I could perhaps actually see the comments because I'm going to turn my screen down um, to you so you can see how far down I am. But anyway, um, it's Monday. I had a massage today. It was fabulous. Um, Molly massage in Lansing. Um, yep, she's my fave. And, and then I had lunch in Old Town. And then all the, why am I, oh, crying out loud. Is that better? <laughs> One of these days I'll get the hang of all this techno stuff. Yeah, had that plugged in. <sighs> Thank you. It's on my face now. So hopefully that's better, right? Tell me it's better. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I had it all ready to go and just forgot to put it on. It's like, it's hot up here. Um, anyway, hi. So that's exciting. You probably didn't hear anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to, I did not, uh, you were supposed to hold me accountable for um, working on the Christmas stock and getting it out of my life. And I, um, I touched it. I didn't do anything. Yay. Hi, everybody, hey, everybody. Um, so now you can hear me. Wow, lots of people can hear me. And um, I want to show you, well, you know, I want to show you some things. So here's the first one. I took a class. So this past weekend was um, Nicole misses my boots. I miss them too. It's too damn hot to wear them right now. <laughs> um, but they're still around. Uh, I'll post some Instagram things when I when I when I pull them out of the closet. Um, right now, I'm having to redo my shoe um, wardrobe um, because I fell, so I need better shoes or different shoes. Although I did just tighten up the straps on the shoes that made me fall, so maybe they won't make me fall again. So um, Fiber World was this weekend. Fiber World was a, an online event. It will always be online forevermore. They told me, they didn't tell me, they told everybody because it was a, you know, group meeting thing at the end of the show, the finale. And um, I took, I taught one class. I'll show you what I taught. I taught um, my buttons and zippers class. This is a finished sample of um what we do in the buttons and zippers and this is an old sample so it's got a it's had a life so it has some fuzz because it's used it's useful i use it to put my um earbuds in that i can never find because they're always in here and it's a buttons and zippers class so we learned how to sew on buttons um three different types one that had oh boy one that has a shank uh, really it does under there see that 
And two that don't, and of the two that don't, we sew on one with four holes and one with two. So that's super exciting and different. And one of them is barely, see if I can make you see it. Whoop. Um, we built a shank under one of them so that it's a little bit raised, uh, so that it's easier to button into things like, button into things like knitted fabric. So this is the one I was working, oh, and duh, buttons and zippers. So there's also a whoop, mirror image, a zipper so that you can see that what's inside your, your bag. So we started with just a garter stitch or crocheted um, square or rectangle kind of thingy. And this one was bigger. I used scraps of yarn all held together, which was great for using up scraps of yarn but not so great for showing people where to put thread because you can't see any of the thread stuff really that was going on. You know, I held a sewing needle, which reminds me there's a threaded sewing needle on the floor somewhere around here because I threaded a needle, dropped it, couldn't find it. So I threaded another needle and kept going. Oh, I froze over there. That's exciting. Okay. Um, oh, maybe I can go like that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Can I get caught up? So I sew, I, I, I always sew the buttons on in the same place every time I teach this class. So I try to sew them on differently. And now I think this looks like a drunken pig. What do you think? Drunken eyes. Whoops. Little nose down here. Um, so that's my drunken pig. And I was in mid. There's the second needle with the thread attached. I was in mid sewing on of the um, zipper. Look at how beautiful that hand stitching is. And then class was over, so I stopped. But my people, my students, um, some of them finished their um, little pouches and sent the pictures of the samples to me. So I was very excited. Um, oh, there we go. Now I think I'm live on both things. Not really sure. <laughs> It's hard. Live, live. Um, I'll, I'll try to quit looking at that. So then I took a class at Fiber World online. It was run by um, some people I know and some people I don't know. So the ones that I um, know are Kat Eldred from Why Not Fibers. She's up in Traverse City area. And Jill Bigelow Satel, who used to live down sort of near here and worked at Woven Art on Mondays. And when she moved up north, I took over Mondays and that's how I started working at Woven Art. So there's that story. And um, and um, now she's up there in a place that starts with M. <laughs> I don't know, it starts with M. Um, so she was one of the, she was like the instructor liaison and Kat was, I don't know what she was. And there, and Audrey um, from down here um, of Nuthatch Hill, Audrey Barton, she was part of the team. And then there were people from, um, I don't know, there were at least three more people and I, that I saw and I don't know who they, I, I haven't met them. So anyway, it was a lovely thing. And so I took a class on Rug hooking. Remember when I couldn't figure it all out? So now I know what it is. So this is rug hooking. This is the kit that I purchased to do with the class. And it's from Loop by Loop Studio. And that's the 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 person in charge of Loop by Loop Studio, Haley Perry, is the person I took the class from. And she was delightful and I learned things. And you ready? I made a fuzzy little um hi Benjamin. Um, I made a fuzzy little bee. Well, I made a bee's uh, bonnet, maybe. Maybe it's a bee's bonnet. But it's a little bit of... Um, can you see that it's kind of little raised loops? And it was a wool fabric that's kind of um, a plaid so that when you cut... Well, I didn't cut the strips. The kit came with the strips already cut. So... Um, it provides, it looks like texture. It's, um, well, this texture, duh, because they're loops, but it's, um, it adds color because it's not just a solid color. So the, um, so you know what? It looked a lot, an awful lot like this. 
So you've got, I didn't see the blue in there. So there's like red and white and brown. Oop. Oop. You can see the red in there. I didn't really notice the blue, but it's in there. And um, so there's other strips. And for example, so it's kind of like linguine or actually fettuccine. It's a, and when it's this color, it's an awful lot like fettuccine. But there are these strips that she cuts and she puts them in a kit and you get the thing, which is a hook, which is the clue that it's rug hooking and not punch needle, which is a different thing, right? Still don't know how to do that. So it was fun. So I did the, I don't know, I'm calling it his um, bonnet. I was calling it his ruff, but now I'm calling it his bonnet, this little bit right here. And then I think I'm going to do his little head next because that'll be easy. That little blob of black Oop. Oop. right there. And then I think that I will be doing the, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like freeform ish. So it's pretty exciting. Um, yes, it is. It's very exciting. New skill, totally new skill. Didn't even know what it was. I, I often ask my students, like, do you know what entrelock is? And they're like, no. I'm like, then why are you taking the class? <laughs> Um, I don't, I do actually say that. And so, um, I didn't actually know what rug punch was, but now I do. And I'm super excited. So I, I got that far and then class was over and, um, you know, it had been a long weekend. So there it sits. So I, my goal is not to let it sit too long so I can remember what I learned, but I also took three pages of notes while I was doing that. Cause I'm me and that's what I do. So I showed you the class I taught and I showed you the class I took and I have a fuzzy in my eye. Um, so what's coming up teaching wise is, um, guess what stitches in August and I just put it on my calendar. I don't have links on there, but on my Sarah Peasley hand knitter calendar for all to see on my website, I, um, am teaching reading your knitting, which is, you know, reading your knitting, looking at your knitting and, um, making sure you know where you are and how many rows you've done and which is the right side and is it time to do a decrease or did you just do a decrease and um and we do this on a variety of a variety of stitch patterns but what that means is um stockinette stitch garter stitch and ribbing and then you kind of get to extrapolate from there for other stitch patterns but it's uh i get a lot of good feedback on that class uh, while i was teaching my four session my eight hour class this the past two weekends um which contains a lot of the information in that's in the most of the information actually that's in the reading your knitting class i had a lot of oh i never noticed that before and oh my gosh it's so good to hear you know how to do that and so that's what that class is chock full of is all those oh aha moments um and i'm also teaching graft a toe like a pro which is kitchener stitch grafting no, that's the same thing. Kitchener stitch, AKA grafting. And we're doing it on stockinette stitch. So um, across a knitted fabric and we'll take a number of passes. Um, first one's practice and it, you, then you get a mulligan and you get to do it again. Cause you'll probably, you may, it's okay. You're encouraged to mess up the first time and then we'll do it a second time. And the first time we do it, uh, you're using a different color. So you can see where, aha, so you can see where um, what you're doing, where the thread's going. The thread, it's not thread. It's called yarn. It's this new industry, the yarn industry. And then the second pass, you do it in the same color, so you can see if you're if you if you've got it figured out. And then, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <gasps> Nicole says that class made me unafraid of knitting. If that makes sense, the reading your knitting class. Thank you, Nicole. It's always nice to get super. Um, well, super, but it's real live testimonial. So thank you for that. Um, still have fuzzies in my eye. The third class, oh, and then the third pass of the um, Kitchener stitch will be on a, a circle as if it was the toe of a sock. So that's the idea is that, you know, we avoid, maybe we avoid knitting cuff down socks because we don't want to Kitchener the toe or we don't know how. So this gets you to the point where you should be able to Kitchener stitch the toe of a sock and my ultimate evil, insert evil laugh here, goal is to have you be able to do Kitchener Stitch without a cheat sheet. So, and if you can't, then I give you, you have a cheat sheet, so it's okay. But um, my goal is that you can, you know, do that. So that's one of the classes. Those are both on Friday, August 6th. 
I'm going with August 6th. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I have one two-part class. The first part Saturday and the second part Sunday. And that is my top-down set and sleeve class. So the first session on Saturday, we knit a, um, a pair of armholes. And we talk about how to make the armholes fit you. And the second class, the second session on Sunday, we um, build a top-down set-in sleeve cap using short rows and picked up stitches. And there is zero that will also fit you, coincidentally. And there is zero sewing in the entire class. Um, so if you were to make a sweater this way, there would be zero sewing for that um, armhole and that um, sleeve cap. And Yep. Oh, and so you can do it from scratch. You can design a sweater and put in set in sleeves, or you can tweak an existing pattern so that it fits you better in the shoulders. Because you'll be able to do that. You'll have that power, that that raw power. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's what's happening in August. So that's the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth, I think. Um, that's pretty soon because this is the twenty sixth of July. Right, right. Whew. Um, yep. Zooming. 2021 is just zooming. The August 6th class is reading your knitting, and um, there's two. And um, graph the toe like a pro. And August 7 and 8 are two two hour sessions, one on Saturday, one on Sunday, that are the um, top down set and sleeve class because that takes, we take two sessions. Yeah, and they're on my calendar on sarahpeasley.com, which I'm gonna, here, I'm gonna type that, which may or may not be right. And I'm gonna type that, which is right. Okay, stitches one didn't do a thing. Oh. I did it wrong. Okay. Gosh darn it. Don't look at that stitches one. Let me figure out what it really is. <laughs> I tried to do it from scratch. Oh, what? Why didn't it work? Well, we'll just copy and paste. Whoops, not there though. Where are you? There you are. Here's the other. Here's the one. Don't use that other one. Hit enter, Sarah. Huh. Okay. I don't know why it's different, but that one worked. So I'm deleting the previous one because I have that power. Okay. So um, I put them on my schedule. I didn't, ex I didn't put links on my schedule, but there are links. Um, you can see the whole event at Stitches. And I don't know if Benjamin's still on here, but I'm taking a class at Stitches this time. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. <laughs> I'm just going to sneak in and take a class. Um, and it's not knitting or crochet or rug punching. Very excited. Um, so that's fun. Uh, let's see. Um, yep. So what I've been working on, what I told you I would do and that you're supposed to hold me accountable for is the Christmas stocking, which as you maybe can see is not quite complete. Matter of fact, I don't think I did anything except pull it out of the bag and hold it in my lap and put it back in the bag. You know, it provided sort of comfort to me, a weird twisted kind of comfort to me while I was doing something else. So that sometimes that's all you need your knitting for is to hang on to it. Uh, fun fact, when my oldest son was taking his driver's test, the in-car driver's test, um, I was allowed to be in the car, but I had to sit in the back seat behind him so he couldn't see me. Or maybe on the other side, but regardless, I, I had to sit in the back seat and I wasn't allowed to say anything. And I was super nervous. And so I had a sock, I was knitting, I had a sock project and I just brought it with me and took it out and held it in my lap the whole time that, that we were, that he and the instructor were in the front seat and I was in the back seat just gritting my teeth, hoping he was doing okay. Um, and I just held my sock like a little security blanket. So that's what we do. This time I was just, um, for this stocking, I was uh, just um, hosting a, knit, knit a, a Zoom along and I just didn't have time to, I couldn't look down and weave an end. So I just held it in my lap. So I had, so I could participate by having some knitting with me. Um, anyway, 
So I didn't work on the stocking because I like uh, this thing that I'm making that I talked to you about last time. Oops. And I got farther. I don't remember where I was. I think I was, I don't know where I was last time, a week ago. But this, so here was the first ball, the reds. I think, yep. And then starting with this one and the blues were the second ball up to here. And then the green hmm, up to here was the third ball. And then, so I'm doing, if we remember, I bought a gazillion um, melons, crazy skeins. And I'm, you know, they're not solid, but I picked some that have red, some that have turquoisey teal, and some that have green. And some have all three. Um, but so I'm alternating a red with something with green. Oops, sorry, red, <laughs> blue green see how that's kind of red blue green and then this is a red one look it just went into the red even though it started down here so the rest of that one is i can't believe i didn't put my microphone on that's hilarious oops nope that's the next one the rest of the current one so i'm in this red green christmasy part and then it'll be all red red and red marled together and that'll be the end of that stripe so i'm this far and it's so, it's just the right drape. I'm so glad I had done a little swatch and I, it was, I thought it was not drapey enough. So I did another little swatch on a bigger hook because it's crocheted. Similar to rug, punch. rug, not rug punch, rug hooking. I mean, really, I don't know. Could you interchange? I don't know. I didn't ask that question. I could have, I didn't think about it. So um, yeah. So I'm very excited about this, zooming along. I don't know if I'm doing it right, the whole crochet thing, but I'm doing it consistently. So there you go. This is the next ball. That's the, ooh, oh, the red is a label. Um, this is the blue ball that's next. We're get, going into some lavender land there. And then the one after that, uh, this is the green one. Notice that it also has blue and some more lavender. So that's very exciting. We'll have a lavender section going on. Wow, they look pretty similar. But this is blue. This is green. So after I finish red, which might be tonight. I don't know. We'll see. So that's that. <laughs> Oops, it's attached under there. Okay. And then what I have left is to talk to you about is that so what I thought I'd do the reason that I have you don't know but my iPad's on and it's not showing current it just held up the blue and the green skeins it being me over there um so I just wanted to have that going so I could see chit chat if there was any chit chat because I'm going to go like this Woo. and I was going to weave in some ends because even though I didn't weave in the ends um I can weave in some ends and then I'm kind of being accountable to you, right? So I thought that I would. Um, so there's there's four total for these this uh, these candies these are candy canes. So I thought that I, and you know, they don't have to be amazing, right? I mean, we want it to look nice. Which way do I want that to go? I will kind of talk to you about what I'm doing. So I want, I don't want the, base of the stitch to crot to look like it's twisted. So I'm figuring out, here's the back of it. Yep. So this is this leg of this stitch. So I want to go that way so it doesn't cross its little legs like it has to pee. <laughs> um, so I'm pulling that way just to get, it's this guy right here. I don't know if you can see. Oh, look, I can see over there. Yep. Um, so I just, skimmed a little bit so I can get him anchored in the right direction and then I can just weave him in wherever. So I'm just gonna skim across. And I did a boo-boo, so I'm gonna stop for a sec, find my 
mismatched chibi. I don't know why I have a mismatched chibi because I'm so anal retentive. I can't believe I let that happen, but I did. And find a needle that's small-eyed but sharper because I do like to split through when I'm weaving in ends. Split through the, maybe that one. I don't know yet. Okay. Back into the mismatched chibi. Whoop. Which one do we like better? This one's sharper. Okay, so that goes in the mismatch. Now in mismatched chibi, because the lid is not the same color as the, what, the toe. Now I can keep, um, you know, doing this. So I'm just going to split through some plies. I would be much more careful. Um, and then I'm going to turn. I like to do like a, what do you call it? 180 and go another direction. I'd be much more careful about this if this were a garment. Um, but this is a nice, sturdy Christmas stocking. And I just want to make sure the yarn tails don't come out when it's um, stretched to put all the things in into it. So there's one. Oop. Just fold the, I'll do that again, I'll show you. I just fold the yarn over. So this this eye of this needle, I don't know, uh, is big enough to get the yarn through. I could use, you know, a bigger, a big eyed needle, but um, I don't want to, because then it's really big. So I fold it and shove it through, technical sewing term, grab the little fold and pull it the rest of the way. Um, yeah, so this is a sharp one that because I want to, skim through fibers and this one okay this stitch was so you know stitches go like a serpentine right and if i pull this tail one way the stitch on the front will look like its little legs are crossed look like a twisted stitch and if i pull it the other way it will look like it's just part of the fabric so i double checked and I want to pull it this way. It's this guy right here. So his little legs are not crossed. Can you see that? Am I holding it on the camera? And and I just tacked it under a couple of strands and then I'm going to do the gonna I'm gonna I'm going to do the thing I did before where I'm just kind of skimming and this is so much less um, precise that I normally do because you're never, you shouldn't see the inside of this Christmas stocking. Nobody should be inspecting this. I just want to make sure it's secure and that it doesn't show on the front. So there's number two. I'll do two more so that the, and then when I cut, I turn my scissors so I'm not cutting flush against the back of the um, knitted fabric. You might be able to guess why. So I've got a little tail that's about the width of my, um, whatever scissors I'm using, about the width of a blade. So there's the bottom of the, um, I almost said coconuts. <laughs> candy canes, you know, Christmas coconuts. They're called candy canes. I had a massage this morning and I smell very coconutty still, so that's why I have coconuts on the brain. Okay, this one, okay, let's see if you can see what I'm doing. So if I pull... Is it this one? Yes, so it's that outside edge and it wants to go, it wants to go that way. It's come from over here, it wants to go over here. So I'm gonna go under a little bit, just skim underneath a little bit and then I'm gonna head back into the red stuff. I don't always do that, um, but because this is red and white, I don't always stick to the same color, but because this is red and white, I'm gonna go ahead and stick to the same color ish. I mean, I'm in white, but it's behind red. You know what I mean? Just in case. I can't get it undone. I pulled a little too tightly. 
Hi, Audrey. Are you rested up from the weekend? Turn my scissors and cut that one. I got one more and these little people, these little, um, what are they called? Not coconuts, <laughs> candy canes, something that starts with a C will be done. Yep, this one goes this way. And you can sort of see, I don't know if I'm holding it in the right place. Nope, there we go. You can sort of see, maybe, that this strand wants to go that way. and come up under here. Like if, if it were knitted, it would have come up, oh, actually in, under this one. So I'll skim under that one. That's where it would have gone if it was an actual, if I kept knitting across with that color. Sorry, I'm realizing I'm probably not always on screen here. I'm doing the best I can. I can't see it because it's aimed down. Let's see. I don't see the needle through there. I'll slack. And I always do a hairpin turn because nothing can pull out in both directions at the same time, period. So it will never pull out all the way. You know, this little end that I'm cutting might um, come undone from one stitch or so, but that's okay. It's inside of a stocking. So those are done. Yay! And we'll turn them right side out. I haven't blocked anything yet. And that's what they look like, nice and neat. And I'm going to give them a little steaming and I'm going to put a um, thin towel on top so that, um, you know, because it's red and white and we just don't want any surprises. I was think so I have a thing called Color Catcher, a color catcher. It looks like a bounce dryer sheet, but it's, and I think it's by the Shout people. And, um, they're amazing, but they need to be in a washing cycle that has agitation, and I'm never going to agitate these. Um, so, ooh, and now I want to switch to my, uh, I'm going to sew up a little, one of the gusset seams. Go ahead and use the giant guy. Do I want to use the giant guy? Sure. Um, I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, uh, I think I'll, I'm going to try putting a color catcher and then a little thin dish towel. I have really thin dish towels that are like crappy as far as dish towels go, but amazing as far as pressing cloths go. And then I'll give it a little shot of steam, especially where I had to reuse some yarn up here and it got kind of wiggly. This yarn is not the same yarn as this yarn down here. This is original yarn from the person who knit the stocking a thousand years ago. And then there, and then they, there wasn't any more of it, so I'm using, um, I don't know, shepherd's wool, I believe. And I'm going to sew this seam. Let's see. And then I'll be done for the day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That guy's fifteen. Did I start at the top? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, whoop, 12, 13, 14, 15. Whoa, that's really off center. Okay. Hmm. 15 and I think 15. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we're going to go like... Hmm. 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 Okay. So we take that one back. I'm going to dive in. Dive in. There we go. And I'm doing mattress stitch up the, oops, doing mattress stitch up the thingy ma do. <laughs> thingy ma do being the technical knitting term for, uh, I don't know, I forget. <laughs> I'm just distracted. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Up the sides, I'm mattress stitch. I'm going one full stitch in from the edge, except it's kind of wonky here. No, I don't like that at all. See that? But good news, I have an end to weave. Oh wait, when I pull the end, oh, that's already better. When I weave the end in, I'll make that little ditch go, go away. 
So in the meantime, I'm just doing mattress stitch back and forth. This mattress stitch uses the little bars between. Sometimes you can use the little bars inside the stitch stitches, but I don't like to do that. I like to use the bars that are um, one whole stitch in, one whole column in, a column of stitches. So it's this little guy that I'm talking about. And since this is the gusset, there's a nice row of stitches there where the O shaping was. Couldn't decide if it was increases or decreases because I'm brain dead. I'm not really brain dead. I'm have been <laughs> I've had a massage. That's what I am. I'm massage brain. So isn't this exciting? Are we watching the paint dry here? The salvage, yes. Oh boy, knit literacy is vital. I don't know what that's in reference to because I didn't look up quick enough. Sorry. Um, oh, the doohickey, whatchamacallit, that kind of thing probably. And then Margaret says this is the salvage. She's correct. This is the salvage stitch that's going to go into the um, behind, into, into the behind. That's not what I meant to say. Into the inside of the stocking, behind the seam. Can you still see? I don't know. I really like seaming when it's easy like this. Okay, how many do I have left? Oh, still quite a few. And hi, Debbie. Miss you. So exciting. Watching somebody sew a seam. You didn't know you were going to watch me sew a seam, did you? I didn't either. I'm going to look at that. See, I counted ahead of time and it's because, yay. <laughs> It worked perfectly. That was sort of a surprise. Okay, so there's my seam. And I didn't into the Oh, read your knitting class. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's for that knit, knit literacy is very important. Um, I thought you were referring to me saying um, something about uh, I was making up words is what I was doing. So I'm going to snug that seam. And watch the magic happen. That was magical. I hope I did that on camera. <laughs> so this is not so bad, but um, I will probably, when I weave this end in, well, let's do it right now for crying out loud. Uh, I put my needle away. That was silly. Was it this one? I think it was this one. So this one, is that the one? Right here, right? Right. Oh, I was trying to say salvage. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. When I said whatever I said, that was not salvage. I tried to get my iPad to where I could watch the comments, but I'm not watching the comments because I'm looking at what I'm doing here. Okay, so I brought that forward and I'm going to, what do I want to do there? I don't know. I could just kind of do the thing where you kind of, hmm, what am I going to do? I'm going to go like this and go like this and go like this, and it may not work. Let's try it. Oh, boom, that's better, right? It's not great, and I'm sort of weaving in the tail on the right side, but I'm gonna go with that and stick this guy down here. Whoops. That's better, isn't it? I I've not done it that way before where I basically wove in the ends on the front, but we're going with it. So I'm going to use this nice ridge that I created with what? With the salvage stitches and just weave kind of split through some strands up 
And then guess what? Guess what we do? We turn the corner. Hairpin turn. Go back down so it can't pull out, although I don't I can't imagine anything that's sewn into a seam is gonna pull out. Yeah, that is like there's no stretch there. So there's that one. Not bad, if I may say so myself. And this guy, I think, yep, he just needs to go. I don't know why he's a he today. So I switched from blunt to sharp. Blunt so I don't split through things and sharp so I do. So I just wanted to pull that to the back and I'm gonna weave it up. How's that gonna look? Ooh, not horrible, but not amazing either. Is there red there too? No, just the white. Am I thinking too hard about it? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So I'm just going to weave that guy in. So back to the sharp one. See, I have a class called Weaving and Ends, and you'll learn things like this, except it's not offered right now anywhere. So neener, neener. But guess what? Free class right now. I, I think... Okay, I'm going to go back to the front. Mm -mm, that didn't do anything. Hmm. <laughs> okay, kind of wishing I had a blunt needle, but we'll make it work. Oh, okay, I think that's better. So I just sort of um, came up from over here and then went through the back of this stitch to try to just bring them together. And then I'll go back down in the middle. I have no idea if you can see what I'm doing. I think you can actually. Oops, I don't know why I unthreaded that. So that's that's not bad, you know. Um, for what I'm getting paid, <laughs> which was actually not bad compared to other uh, deals I've made for Christmas stockings here and there, which I will tell you, I don't think I told you, I officially retired from Christmas stocking knitting. So this is the last one um, I sent out and, and not, I didn't just say, I'm not going to knit them anymore. I actually sent the people I've been knitting them for emails and said, I'm not going to knit them anymore. And I'm sending you your yarn. So there, I haven't sent it yet, so it's not a done deal, but the boxes are by the front door. Okay, so I didn't do all the ends. I didn't do any before I talked to you, but I finished the um, candy canes and I sewed that gusset seam. And I actually bought today, um, so I picked up today, uh, I don't know what it's called, a ham, a, a pressing ham maybe? Um, that you would put in like to press the a sleeve, a, a shirt sleeve, and I can just shove it right in there and get a nice press on the um... ah candy canes. Gosh, I don't know why I can't say that. I, that time I tried to say cotton candy, but that looks pretty darn good there. Oh wait, it was down here. <laughs> that looks great. That's not the seam. This was the seam. No, that is the seam. Oh, it is. It's right over here. You can't even see it. Okay. See, that's how good I am. So here's the other one. I'm not going to do that right now because you're probably bored to death. And um, yeah, so I have like six more to do. One, two, three on this snowman. This oh, snowman. Holy crap, Sarah. Um, they would be called Santa and three on this one over here. And then that's exciting, but then I have all the ones over here. The way I do in Tarja, I leave half the tails to the front. And guess what? That means you don't accidentally knit with your tails. So that's amazing. But I'll have to, um, so I usually finish the, the back tails first. These are the ending tails. And then I bring the front ones to the back and finish those. So I really, I finished the um, candy canes with you guys. And I did one of the 
four, one of the one, two, three seams I'll have to do. So look at that progress. I still need to do these guys. This is interesting because, um, you know, there's a jog because that's the beginning of the round. But if you weave it in, let's see, what am I pulling on? If you weave it in creatively, can I do it without looking? You can make it look like there's no or very little jog there. It's magic. I just did that blind from without looking. Yeah, well, you can still see it there. So maybe I didn't do it right. Let's check. Nope, did it wrong. That's why it didn't work perfectly. Okay, so if I were to weave them in that way. Eh, eh, better than this one that I didn't do anything to yet though, right? Okay, so all done. So there you go. I gave you a, a free lesson. Whew, um, I'm back. <laughs> so did that work okay? Um, you know, that's not how I do the Zoom teaching. I have a second camera and a whole setup for my hands, but I thought that worked pretty well. Whoops. Oh my gosh. There I am. I pressed something on my keyboard. So yeah, not bad. I made progress. Um, I'll check in, in with you again next week. Um, hopefully I will have made more progress, probably on my afghan though, to be honest. Um, my crocheted afghan. Because that's really fun. It's making me very happy. It's sparking joy is what it's doing. Oh, and I, um, I've been winding yarn. Remember I had found some moth damage in my yarn. Oh, hi Fran. Nope, you'll have to just watch it. Sorry, <laughs> but it's nice to see you. Um, I... Yeah, I had found some moth damage in some projects that had set or bags that had set out sat out in my basement office. Hi, anyway, Fran, um, for a long time. And I'll I'll give you an example. You know, I've been mending so mending, darning socks. My usual um, darning is to say, oh darn, and throw them away. But the ones that are wearing out, the whole bunch wore out at once, and so I was just cutting off the feet and re-knitting new feet because the legs are perfectly fine. And um, I have since learned how to darn, I may actually darn socks, mend socks. I've learned a knitted way and a woven way. So now like, uh, but anyway, I had um, all these socks that I had cut off, cut the feet off of. Um, and I, some of them had new feet, but I hadn't woven in the ends yet. And some didn't have new feet yet. And some weren't cut apart yet, but I had a bag with all those socks and odd balls of sock yarn, solids, because I have some like solid sock yarn, but not enough to make a pair of socks, but enough to be used to like knit new feet or something. So I um, had that bag sitting out in my basement office for months, many, many months, at least, you know, through a pandemic. And um, when I moved my office up here and started going through things and I pulled some of those balls of yarn out and there was moth, there were moth carcasses in there. So I've been very slowly. And then, you know, I had the big overhaul of my stash a few weeks ago and sort it, resorted all of it and touched all the yarn. But I found some more evidence of moths, not in the boxes that were closed, but in bags that were open that I was now putting the yarn away because I it was done with whatever or, um, or um, yeah. I lost that sentence right in the middle because I saw Jennifer's um, comment on, I keep meaning to learn darning. Well, um, Woven Art just got in little darning uh, kits and they have darning eggs. Um, so maybe somebody should learn how to use those tools and then teach a class. What do you think? Sound like a good idea? Um, so the sock yarns that I um, had returned to stash had carcasses and um, <laughs> um I, gosh, I trying to read the, Audrey said something funny. Um, yep, so, so I'm, anything that's in a skein, I'm looking at, because the, the little bastards do damage to the outside. They don't like burrow in and do damage from the inside. So anything that was like in a skein, like it came from the store or the festival or the booth or whatever, um, I look at very carefully and put it in my cleaned out box. And um, I've got cedar blocks that um, I've had for quite a while. I think I got them in the laundry section of a big box store um, or ordered some from 
or maybe Bed Bath and Beyond. That would be a that would be a big black store. I was thinking Meyer, but um, but I've learned since that you should um, rough them up with some sandpaper once in a while. So I don't have any sandpaper, so I'm going to borrow some from my. Um, I'm not going to borrow any. I'm going to um, beg for some from my neighbor and rough them up a little bit and then put them in the box and close the box. Um, and, you know, goodbye moths. Also, whoop, see up there, right uh, 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 there, that's a moth trap. I've got four moth traps in my office, in this studio now, so. Um, and I put them on a subscription basis with Amazon. So every 12 weeks I'll get new moth traps. And I'm taking this very seriously because moth damage. Um, yeah. Uh, so I was rewinding. I'm rewinding my, so if it's in a, hi, middle of sentence. Um, if it was already like, or if I hadn't wound it into a ball yet or changed it from the form in which I bought it, uh, English, um, then I am just looking it over very carefully and putting it back in my box that I've wiped out and uh, we'll put the roughed up um, cedar box in. And anything that had been wound left over from a project or I had, you know, wound it at some point, I am rewinding, holding the yarn at tension while I wind so that if it's going to break, it's going to break in my hand. And a lot of that happened last night. I went through, I don't know, 8 billion yards of yarn and I ended up throwing away quite a bit. Um, and it was all, you know, like I said, it's the damage is always on the outside. So if I start winding onto my ball winder, but from the outside of the ball, uh, that's where I'm going to find the breaks. And so, you know, if I find a break, I'll break it. I'll finish breaking it off and you can tell that they're little nibble marks you can just tell because it's uneven and it's not always all the all the strands and um i yep so i'd break it off a little bit farther in and then throw that part away and keep going and if i get got another break i'd throw that part away and keep going and um the middle parts were mostly fine but there were some where it just kept breaking because it wasn't that big a ball um, that was left or it was, you know, if you pull from the inside, then the outside kind of deflates. So it's not really solid anymore. And so there was more damage on those. So there were, I don't know, a lot of the sock yarn because that had been in an open bag for a long time. And then some other yarns as well, but the things that have stayed in boxes, I have like rubber made boxes, those have stayed safe. So we're putting everything back in and I have, so I got, I made it through the fingering weight yarns, Shetland and fingering. Um, and I'll tell you, holding fingering weight yarn at tension while you're winding as fast as you can, you get rug burns on your hand, just FYI, in case you wondered. So tonight's going to be sport weight. Um, I have a shit ton of sport weight, so maybe that'll, you know, to be continued another day because I would like to just sit and work on my Afghan. And I have book club tomorrow and I haven't read the chapter for tomorrow yet, so I should do that because they're pretty, um, they're serious in this book club. <laughs> um, they will look at you with evil eyes if you haven't read the thing. Not really, but I would like to read the book. The book is, um, yep, Set Boundaries, Find Peace by um, Nedra something Tawab. It's very good. You should all read it. So I'm done. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off all these lights and um, go feed the dog. So you guys have a good week. I'm going to be at the shop. If you're local, I'm going to be at the shop tomorrow, which is Tuesday. That's unusual. And Wednesday, which is usual. And Friday, which is unusual. Glover. Thank you. Nedra Glover Tawab. Um, excellent. Excellently written. This I'm going to read chapter three tonight. And I'm already like I was in love in the introduction. I was in love with this book. So it's a life changer. Um, yeah, so I'll be at the shop um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday this week. And then Sunday, my normal day, and then Monday next week. And then I'm back to normal hours, I think, until the next thing. And people are going on vacation. What's up with that? Why do they think they can go on vacation? So I'm, I'm filling in, um, just like people fill in for me when I teach or take a class. Yesterday, Sunday, I took a class, so I wasn't at the shop. So Kirsten filled in for me. Okay, now I'm really ending. Thank you for listening. Um, Fran, hurry up and get caught up. And maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. Oh my gosh, Wednesday. Because there's a knit along on Wednesdays.
at the shop. See ya.